Welcome back to Chat the Brain with Dr. Ghislaine. I'm Dr. Christine Ghislaine, board certified clinical neuropsychologist. In today's video, I'm going to continue to move through those domains of functioning. Today's topic is visual perception. So I need to begin today's video with a disclaimer, and that is that visual perception is reliant upon intact vision. So when I'm talking to you about a visual perceptual problem, I'm not saying that this individual has poor vision. Their vision is assumed to be, and oftentimes tested beforehand to be sure, their vision is assumed to be adequate or intact, whereas their perception is the part that we're gonna talk about today. So visual perception is also often called nonverbal processing. So just as we talked about language and verbal processing, now we're gonna talk about visuospatial or nonverbal processing. Um, I prefer to say visuospatial or visual processing because I don't like to use the negative form, the nonverbal. Well, no, it's just visual perceptual. So when we think about visual perception, we think about perceiving or form and pattern discrimination. So what does that mean? That means if I look across the room and I see an object, I know that's a drinking glass or I know that's an apple versus an orange. If I'm completing a pattern, let's say, it goes blue and then orange and then blue, I know the next would be orange. This is sort of pattern discrimination and object identification. This is all a part of visual perception. On the other hand, we think about visual spatial processing, us in relation to the objects around us in our environment. This is our personal orientation and sort of location in space. Without getting too far into the weeds in terms of the different types of pathways within the brain that process visual information, the different areas of the brain that are particularly involved, I will just say that there are different discrete pathways that help us understand both what an object is, so what we're seeing, and a different pathway that is looking at sort of where we are and where items are in space. That's about as far into that as I'll go for today, but in future videos I will talk about the neuroanatomical bases for a lot of these discrete domains of functioning that we're talking about. So why is it important to test visuospatial processing or visuospatial discrimination? Well, a lot of the information that we gain from the world is through looking at objects and seeing things in our environment. In younger children, visual spatial understanding is important for being able to gather information from graphs and charts and maps and things like that. For adults, it's important in spatial navigation, being able to drive yourself to the grocery store and being able to get back. Visual perception really impacts all of the ways that we learn and gain information in those non-language ways or through viewing and engaging with our environment. Where we may see visual spatial difficulties in, let's say, a child, for example, is a child who really struggles to put together pieces of a puzzle or to understand that objects fit together in a particular way. They also might struggle with understanding patterns or completing a pattern, let's say, that's placed in front of them. While every child doesn't need to be a puzzle whiz, we know that it's important to be able to understand relationships between visually perceived objects because that impacts our learning of visually presented information. Tune in to my next video on memory.